Hi. At first glance, Cullen's life is not much different from the life of other teenagers. He's smart in moderation, loves sports, is fond of games, but is also blindingly handsome. So much so that he has to hide at home from prying eyes. His unsociable demeanor worries the family. Cullen, on the other hand, dreams of finding someone who will see something in him other than his appearance. And for this end, he will need to change his life abruptly. <laughs> Young Cullen hit the genetic jackpot. Every member of his family, including himself, can claim no flaw in their appearance. The father, in the past, is an avid ladies' man who won the heart of 1,200 girls. The most beautiful of them became Cullen's mother. His older brother, Mass Ocus, is also as attractive as he can be and has even written his own guide to winning over girls. But Cullen, in his turn, can't socialize with the opposite sex so smooth. As soon as he's on the street, crowds of fans start chasing him, so he doesn't even go to the nearest store without a mask. Otherwise, Cullen spends almost all his time at home. His only best friend is a fish named Anto, with whom he plays collectible cards and sometimes shares his concerns. His parents and brother are seriously alarmed by Cullen's seclusion and try to motivate the guy to live like other teenagers. But the young man is adamant. He doesn't want to accept his father's offer to join the basketball team. And when Moss Okus tries to help his brother better his personal life and asks what type he prefers, Cullen gives one clear answer. Tapi, yang paling penting nih, huh? yang gak suka sama gue. But the adults don't give up their attempts. They sit in a special room that has even a detective board with red threads and an analysis of Cullen's behavior and watch the teenager through a hidden camera. Finally, a brilliant idea, in their opinion, dawns on the trio, and they decide to act at once. When Cullen goes down to the kitchen for a drink of water, the parents act out a scene in which they discuss the family's financial situation. The woman tries to talk her husband out of working on a difficult project due to his age, but he explains that the money will be good for him and he'll be able to pay for Cullen's homeschooling next semester. Walaupun ya pa, mulai besok kita cuma bisa makan telur oren aja pun mama gak apa-apa. Yang penting papa gak ada makan orang kerjaan itu. The father begins to cry and ask for forgiveness from his wife for not coping with the duty of breadwinner in the family. But Cullen's mother comforts him and says that together they'll definitely come up with something. The canny plan does not fail. Taken aback, Cullen cries all night long. When he comes down to the kitchen in the morning, he sees his father sitting with a newspaper looking for a job, and his mother put a small-sized breakfast on the table. Their son apologizes for being a burden to them. He says that he wants to improve and will go back to regular school next semester. Mass Okus, who's chimed in in this moment, promises to become a love mentor for his brother. However, Cullen voices the conditions abruptly. Ignoring the persuasions of his older brother, Cullen still goes to an all-boys school, keeping his helmet on. Naturally, Cullen's extraordinary look doesn't go unnoticed, but he does not care about the ridicule of his classmates. But then, the teacher comes into the classroom and commands that he take off his headgear and show his face. His beauty impresses the teacher so much that she even has to call an ambulance. After this incident, the bullies who picked on him in class take him to the basement and tie him up. There's also another student unknown to Cullen. Hooligans are introduced as the attack gang and dance in front of him like sailor warriors, which only follows with laughter. This irritates the leader of their gang, City. He threatens Cullen and orders him to take an invitation to this year's prom to a girl's school called BBM. The thing is, in last attempts, they were turned down because of the beautiful Amanda studying there. City is in love with her, and according to him, Cullen can convince the schoolgirls to come to the dance using his appearance. The stranger sitting next to him frees Cullen. He's not going to backpedal, and he heads straight to the director's office to report the threats. The director, to their surprise, listens attentively to the story and states that this time there was no excuse for City and his guy's actions. Allegedly, They've been refusing to graduate from the school for three years because of the canceled prom with the girls. And then the man adds that Cullen and his friend should take this invitation. Otherwise, no certificates for them. Cullen immediately understands why the stranger so strongly urged him not to go to the director. They have no choice now. The guys finally get acquainted. Kibo, Cullen's new acquaintance, explains that his older brother once studied here. He's always beaten City in mini football, but he's already graduated 
and now City troubles the younger ones in revenge. On this note, the guys exchange numbers and the very next day go on the errand. But the BBM students are extremely aggressive when they arrive, and Cullen has to take off his helmet. A real commotion begins at the school. The girls get all bonkers, and the incident even ends up in the news release of the local TV channel. While the main character returns home, he himself is put on a wanted list, and his entire family is in the spotlight. His brother eagerly gives live interviews about Cullen's life. His parents even sell tickets for a tour of the real handsome man's house, and Amanda sees his face on the news. Somehow, Cullen manages to break away from the crowd of fans and hides on the roof of the building. He receives a video call from his parents and brother. They all ask him to come home, but the guy responds that he will do so when the family stops using him for their own gain. At this point, the touring girl appears in the frame, and Cullen accidentally learns the bad news. <laughs> Saying, do whatever you want, Cullen puts out the phone and stands on the edge of the roof. A few seconds later, he hears the voice of a girl behind him calling him a coward. Startled, the guy drops his helmet on the asphalt and turns about. The girl sits on a ledge with a notebook in her hands and looks at him with a sneer. Cullen wonders why the sight of his face didn't make her faint. The new girl twists her finger at her temple, calls him a narcissist, and hurries away. Cullen yells out his name in her wake, but the girl ignores him. He realizes he might have fallen in love. After the incident, the now well-known handsome man calls Kibo and asks for help. His friend jokingly calls him a loser for not taking her phone number or even asking her name. All he knows is that the girl was in the uniform of a BBM student. Kibo promises to help his friend find his one and only, and at the same time, fulfill the errand of the director and CD. The boys come back to the girls' school to submit the prom invitation right into Amanda's hands. Gwe, Gwe Kibo. Okay. The girl promises to check this matter with the committee and contact them if the answer is yes. On the way back, while making his way through the wall of girls who attacked him, Cullen notices the very same girl, but he can't make it to her. It doesn't take long to wait for Amanda's response. Upon returning to the school, the guys receive a message with consent. Not only are CD and his gang exulted by this news, but so are the rest of the students and even the teaching staff. Cullen is also thrilled. He even dreams of taking the same stranger from the roof to the prom, but the snoring Kibo sleeping next to him quickly brings him to his senses. Over time, the guys start to get closer. They go to classes together, play games, and even watch the grandmother's favorite TV show with her. Cullen realizes that he made a true friend. One morning, enthusiastic Kibo invites him to go to a mini football game with him. Cullen doubts the idea. After all, there will be cheerleaders whose reaction to him is predictable. Only after the game does Cullen realize that it wasn't him they were chanting for. His sweat dropped on the two guys, thereby making them irresistible as well. The handsome guy goes to the vending stall and recognizes the roof girl is a saleswoman, but the dialogue isn't successful. She's still cold to Colin. The guy introduced himself again, and just as the girl's about to say her name, Kibo chimes in. He calls her Riri, and they have a brief talk. Colin realizes that the two must have known each other for a long time. When it comes to the prom, Riri flatly declares that she will not go to the party. Such mainstream meetings are too loud. Music gets on her nerves. This fact saddens Colin. Before going to bed, the guy writes a message to his older brother, asking for help. The next day, they meet at the bistro. Mas Okus is sobbing with happiness that Cullen finally needs his advice. <laughs> he also brought his parents with him. They're sitting in the next table. Cullen's mom and dad talk him into going back home and assure him they're no longer arranging the tours. He says that he doesn't hold a grudge against them and he's even glad that everything turned out this way because he feels like a different person outside the house. So, Mas Okus begins mentoring Cullen. First of all, he advises him to learn as much as possible about the object of love, her favorite food, her favorite pastime, and most importantly, according to Masokis, her zodiac sign. As a bonus, the older brother leaves Cullen a book with recommendations. The information collecting operation seems to be going well. Cullen finds out that Riri is a Virgo who loves ice cream and popping bubble wrap, but it doesn't bring much joy, as only Kibo fills him in on her during their get-together. Cullen realizes that the two are very close, and that he, apparently, will have to fight his best friend for Riri's attention. Kibo notices that the boy draws into his own shell and tries to get him to talk, but Cullen says it's fine. His buddy suggests that they do karaoke together sometime to have fun and celebrate his good math score. 
A couple of days later, Amanda arrives at the boys' school and goes straight to Cullen to give him something special. Samaini? CD immediately jumps onto Cullen, grabbing the invitation. The classmate explains to the guy that this is the common rule. If one is invited, then everyone can go. Cullen cares about going to karaoke together much more than Amanda's birthday. The evening doesn't go as smoothly as he would like. Kibo not only sings better than him, but also communicates with Riri much more easily. When the payment time comes, it turns out that Kibo left his wallet at home. He goes outside to catch the cell reception and transfer money. Upset, Cullen is left alone with his love interest. He asks Riri how long she's been in love with Kibo. The girl responds that he's misunderstood everything. Nevertheless, Cullen insists. Kibo tuh sukanya sama cewek lain, Amanda. He suggests that Riri come to Amanda's party to see for herself. Meanwhile, Kibo returns to the karaoke room. On next day, when Cullen comes to the party with Kibo, the birthday girl virtually meets them at the entrance. Amanda is surprisingly stern with Cullen taking his friend's hand and leading him to the second floor. Riri, on the other hand, looks confused. After a brief hesitation, the girl goes upstairs. Kibo doesn't notice her. He's talking to Amanda and asks why they're here when a beauty is obviously only interested in someone like Cullen. Then, Amanda spots Riri on the stairs and shuts Kibo up with a kiss. Cullen catches up with Riri on the street, in tears. Riri opens up to him and shares her disappointment. She always considered Kibo different, not biased to appearance. Cullen confesses his feelings for her, but Riri says they can be nothing more than friends and leaves. Kibo's caught off guard by Furious Seedy and his gang. The bullies beat up the poor guy in front of his friend for kissing Amanda. Cullen picks him up and drives him home. The next day, as usual, they and the grandmother watch a soap opera in the living room. In the frame, a man accuses his best friend of betrayal for a woman. Cullen feels as if Kibo himself is appealing to his conscience right from the screen. That same evening, Kibo gives Cullen the unique collectible card that his friend has always wanted. Cullen says that he doesn't deserve it, or their friendship, and he confesses everything. Moreover, Cullen says that he asked Amanda to kiss Kibo, in return promising to be her date at the prom. Saddened, Kibo says that his friend only needed to be honest, and Kibo would have backed down from fighting for Riri's heart. He takes the card from Cullen and chases him out of the house. Completely broken, Cullen returns to his home. The family gives him a warm welcome, but the teenager silently goes to his room. The exams and prom are nearing. Cullen is devastated by the lost friendship with his best friend, and the whole family sees the change in him. One day, after dinner, his mother comes to his room and brings him a present. Bukan ya? Anto gak pernah mati, sayang. His mother gives an inspiring speech about how hard it is to face the big world, but the happiness that lies ahead is worth all the pain. The next day, Cullen is to have a conversation with his father. The guy asks if it's true that men from their family have always been wanted among women. His dad admits that only one woman ever rejected him with the words, a nasty face is better than a nasty heart, referring to Cullen's mother. Encouraged by the support of his family, Cullen runs to Riri who is selling food in a food truck, and then rushes up to his best friend. He, as expected, doesn't want to see him, but Cullen wants to make things right. He apologizes and asks Kibo to confess his feelings to his lover. The relationships with family and friends have been restored. Kibo and Cullen come to the prom together. The main character finally asks if Riri has changed her mind about being with him, and leaves the couple alone. He goes to fulfill his promise to Amanda. Taking her by the hand, he leads her to the dance floor, which causes Sidi's anger. The couple become the king and queen of the ball. During the award ceremony, Cullen suddenly hears from the front row the voice of girls who admire his beauty, and only one of them calls his appearance nonsense and leaves. Cullen watches her go. His heart is beating frantically in his chest. Is extraordinary beauty a gift or a curse? What do you think? Tell us in the comments who you supported in the fight for the heart of Riri. Don't forget to subscribe and check out other exciting stories.